Oh, oh. 
Holy Spirit in a way that's different. Somebody had to press the way to get here.
our hands in God's presence in a posture of worship. Will you please just try? Just try. Get something in your mind that you're thankful for. Get something in your mind right now that you're, for which you're thankful. Come on, lift your hands in a posture of worship to God. Thank you. If you're at the altar, hug somebody, tell them you're going to be all right. <laughs>
right, take it in nourishment, you're blessed. Know who you are and know who you are, you're blessed. I mean to bother you today, but I want to make sure before you leave here today, you know how good, 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 mm, good, Lord is. Y'all know I could preach like that. I could get back this too. Come here, John McCovey, with your handsome, good-looking, fabulous, intelligent self.
Hollywood, as some of you may know, the writer's strike is over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a lot of togetherness. Uh, sometimes probably too much. For Tony, probably, but uh, God is good. And um, my mom is here with us after a couple, couple few weeks, a month or so. She had eye surgery on both eyes and uh, came out of it with flying colors. So she's seeing spots in. Uh, spots on the floor and all kinds of stuff she hasn't seen in years. So I'm grateful to God for that. And for our son um, who came up here and surprised all of us with wonderful things to say. So I just wanted to say that um, as great as all of that is, it would not have been possible without the Church of, of Christian Fellowship. So you all have been the foundation for John um, to grow. And I remember when he when you lifted him up in this pulpit that's right, that's right. and blessed him. So uh, he has kept us, and you have been a great supporter. So I love you, my child and friend. Yes. And um, it is because of, of this church. So I just wanted to say that. That's all I want to say. God for this precious moment. Yeah. And I want to say, uh, Brother Tony, I admire you, man. The job you're doing with your family. You say a strong black man, I respect you. Just delighted what's happening with the Coveys, just the McGee. We're just going to continue to believe God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 It's just the life of what my soul is good and happy today. Brother Ashley is standing, and I want to tell you that uh, the next voice you will hear will be one that will bless you. Uh, I think that when we hear Reverend Bilson Davis share, we know one thing for sure, that he's coming from a place of love. Amen. Amen. And, uh, all the time. All the time. Sometimes the water comes through his eyes, and it's because God has enlarged his heart. And I'm grateful he was down in Texas and I had a speaking engagement this morning over on the fancy part of town. And I said, Rev, I need you, man. And uh, he came. And I'm glad. So since he studied and got himself together, I'm going to cross my legs and let the suede shoe show. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the next voice you'll hear after the scene today. Will be that of our own, the Reverend Bilson Davis. Let the people say, Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord!
closes up the last time, you'll be the one to turn the lights off. So business is going and it's still moving along 20 years ago. And that's what I asked her to do, and she did. So I'm thankful to God for her. Texas, and I was um, 23rd is the day my wife passed, and I like to go back and play flowers on our, on our, on our site there, and while I was there, I, I did a lot of praying. Yeah, yeah. And it's not that I don't pray here. I do. I pray a lot. But boy, when I got down there, I prayed so much because there were so many people in the need of prayer. It reminded me of uh, two uh, two brothers who was in the Lord. Got a story, right? You know, and they they thought they were so smart. They knew God's word, and I tell you, there was nothing that, that you could say that they didn't know. So one of them decided to challenge his friend. He said, I'll give you $10 if you can recite the Lord's Prayer. The friend said, what? He said, I'll give you $10 if you can recite the Lord's Prayer. The friend said, I'll take that back. So he began. He said, now I lay me down to sleep. <laughs> I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Yeah. And if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Yeah. Uh, friend looked at me laughing and went in his pocket and said, I didn't think you knew it. <laughs> That's good, man. That's good. That's good. <laughs> you know, there's certain things in the Bible we need to know. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> we need to take our time and walk through God's Word. Yeah. And I pray today as I bring up this scripture in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Very, very familiar chapter. Is Jesus Christ giving his disciples an outline to pray? And sometimes we just need an outline. Sometimes we just need to know what does God have in store? What do we have to do, Lord, to, to pray to? Because so many people have a hard time praying. And I find myself praying so often. As I was in Texas, I, I had to pray. I had to pray a lot. Pray for my sisters. I had one you know, had some eye surgery. One of my sisters had both her eyes worked on it. I had to pray for her. Another sister has a thyroid issue. She's dealing with that now. Had to pray for her. Got a cousin who came by and she got diabetes and they're gonna put a point in her arm and to, I mean money, I guess you would say. She's gonna go in and start a, start therapy for that. Got a nephew who had a Achilles tendon ruptured in his in his ankle, right? in, his, in his foot. And I had to pray for that. Another nephew just got a new job. He's a school teacher. He was a principal. It cuts in his old school, found a new job, new principal, new location. We pray for that. We pray. Then as I left my wife's gravesite, and I'm heading back to my sister's house. Talk, Reverend. I decided to take a detour. And that detour got me going over to my mother-in-law's old house. And as, now I don't know if everybody knows this, my daughter knows the story, 
just as good as I do. She's been in that old house. And as I was driving by, my son came down the stairs. And I tell you, we are not on the best of terms. And I prayed with him. And I asked him about an old friend I hadn't seen in 45 years. So he said, yeah, he's still up there. You can see his truck on here and knock on the door. He'll be there. So I went and knocked on the door. And this guy came outside. And, you know, I'm looking at his face. And I, I'm telling you, you know, time has taken its toll on us. Yeah, yeah, sir. Amen. Amen. You know, when I, my hair was black and my fro was big. And I had all the Correct. I mean. Correct. Woo. <laughs> got y'all. So he saw me and I saw him. And he said, yes, can I help you? <laughs> and we had a name. I mean, I'm going to share something with you guys today. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> All day. All day. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> we share, I, 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 was, I was with these guys that called themselves Hebrew Israelites. You know, you've seen the, the, the people in the park playing the kungas and the ladies dancing. I was involved with all that. <laughs> so they gave me a name. My name, my, my nephew who died at 19, my sister named him this name. And his name was Denique. And that was the name that was given to me, Denique. And the definition of Denique was one who is himself. He's not trying to pretend to be somebody else. And my friend had a name, and I'm going to say this name, you probably won't pronounce it very right, right, but I knew how to practice this name, and I said it over and over. And when he said, who are you? And I hugged him, and I said, are you me and And he said, yes. <laughs> and as I'm hugging him, and you know me, I'm, I get teary. I said, this is Bill. He cried. And I cried because this was the same guy that introduced me to my wife. I had not seen him for 45 years. The day I go to see her to put flowers on her grave is the day I see the guy who introduced me to her. Talk, sir. Tell the story. 45 years later. So I guess you know we cried a little bit. And we prayed. And he sang me a song. From the scripture I am going to recite to you today. But he put words to it. He was always a good singer. But now he's playing the accordion, you know? And the song was nice. And I'm crying and he's singing. And we stopped and we prayed and we prayed. And then I had to, I had to fill him in on 45 years of my life. And I showed him pictures of my kids and the family and all this. And boy, he just boo-hooed. He said, man, I miss you. I said, I miss you too. But there we were, praying. Praying to God. Thanking him for introducing me to the woman that I married and loved and I took that vow very seriously. Amen. What did it say? Until when do you part? Yeah. yeah. I did that. Yeah. I went all the way to the end with her. But that's what God wanted me to do. As I look at the scriptures today, and I think of another scripture because as I'm thinking about prayer, I'm thinking about praying, I'm thinking about I do this a lot. I say, I pray often. I pray we all know how to pray. I pray we all know where to go to God and to get on our knees and, and find that prayer closet to get in that special place with God. Because there's going to come a time in your life that you somebody just needs to hear from God. You may be the one person to introduce them to him. And it may come to a prayer. Philippians 4, 6 says, Don't worry about anything. 
But in everything, through prayer and, and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. No matter how big or how small, present your request to God. Because in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast all your cares on him. Because what? He cares, he cares about you. Yes. Don't worry about all this stuff that's going on. You go to him in prayer. You get on your knees and you say, Lord, here I am calling upon your name. Yes, sir. I do that a lot. I pray for my pastor. I pray for this church. I pray for all of you. I mean, my, your name come up in my prayer closet at night, two, three o'clock in the morning. Here I am. I pray to you. But as I told you, my friend was playing this song. And the words was taken from Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. But I want to take it a little further. Prayer and praise. When we pray, we give God praise. We praise God in our prayer. P-R-A-I-S-E. Simple word. Praise. And I'm going to take and give you a letter and give you a word that's associated with P-R-A-I-S-E. So when we pray, when we pray and we're, we're, we're passionate. We're, we're praising him. We're, we're giving him glory. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. The disciples said, Lord, I want to know how to pray. Because there's a special relationship between you and God. And I want to know how do you have that relationship with him? Because Jesus Christ had power. The disciples wanted power. I want power. Pastor wants power. So that he can present the word of God in such a powerful way that when we leave, we say, oh, I remember that. Okay. Pastor preached on that on Sunday. That's what we want to leave with. A word from God. Yes. A powerful word from God. Amen. And as I read this scripture, it says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Holy be your name. So the first letter in the word in, in P-R-A-I-S-E is to praise. We need to praise him because who? He's holy. Yes, sir. He's worthy. Yes, we got to honor him. We got to lift and bow our knees to him. Yes. We got to say hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for saving me. We praise him. We honor him. We lift him up every time we go to him in prayer. Each and every day. Of, have you been driving down the street? And I know I have. And I see people in homes. You know, I stop and raise my hands. And Lord, in Jesus' name, help that brother. Help that sister off that, out of that tent. I pray for them. But I'm praising God that he's given me the ability to even say the word. I praise him for it. R. I take the word R and in verse number 10 it says this. It says your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The R. Reign in our lives. R-E-I-G-N. He reigns in our lives. He's there to, in control. The, the first part of this scripture, of this verse, is to say we're honoring God, we're thanking God. He's reigning in our life. He's in control of our life. He's reigning. He is powerful. 
There's no other name that we recognize but Christ. When uh, Olympic athletes are competing and when it's time to get their gold medal and they go to the podium and they sing a song and that song is the national anthem. They don't ask what song should I sing. They don't say, oh, well, you know, I think I feel like this amazing grace today. Can you feel amazing grace today? No, there's a song that's saying that, we, that they all have to honor to. That's how we sing to God. There's no different way to come approach him. He reigns over all of us. Yeah. We have to give him glory and him honor in all that we say and all that we do. Yes, sir. We reign. He reigns over us. Verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Amen? Amen. The next A is accommodate. He gives us our daily bread. Whatever you need, he accommodates that for you that day. Amen. Whatever you need. God will make it happen. God loves you so much. He loves the birds. He loves the lilies of the field. He don't, they don't ask how they flow or what they're going to eat. He provides it for them. So why do we worry about what we have? Accommodate. We pray for stuff beyond today. But God said, all you need to worry about is one day at a time. But we're so concerned about what in the future. Well, we don't even know what the future's going to hold. We don't even know we're going to make it to tomorrow. But right now, I'm going to say, Lord, protect me, feed me, provide for me, provide for my family, provide for my church. This is what I pray for, to accommodate my needs. I, the word I use for I is iniquity. For forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You got to admit your sin, my brothers and sisters. Lord have mercy. You got to say to God, I have sinned. Confess your sin to him because, guess what? He already knows what you did. <laughs> it's not a surprise to God what you did. <laughs> oh, you said, God, I, I just want you to be a part of it now. <laughs> uh, I already did it. So forgive me of my sins. Iniquity. We got to praise him. He reigns in our lives. He accommodates for us. But we're going to have to say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. And we got to forgive those who trespass against us. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to have to give, forgive somebody because guess what? Somebody has stepped on your toe. Someone had called you a name and you know it wasn't true. But you had to say, Lord, forgive them. What, what did Christ say on the cross? Forgive them. For they know not what they do. Work. Iniquity. Iniquity. Confess with your mouth that you have sinned. All have sinned. And as Pastor said, all means all that all means. All the time. All the time. I get that right. <laughs> but we all have iniquity in our lives. Yes, sir. We pray, you know? Yes, sir. We praise him, aren't we? Yes, sir. We ask him to reign over our life in our prayer. We have to accommodate everything we need in our lives. And God has to come to you. I want to come to you and have you forgive me of my sins. In verse 13, it says, And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Lord have mercy. So for the F, Lord God, I, I want that shield in front of me. Yeah. yeah. I want your shield in front of me. I want to be able to fight the evil one with that shield on my shoulder. The shield is the word of God. Yeah. He will protect us through all that we're going through, but we got to have our shield up. We want protection. We want God to overlook everything we're doing. 
There's a song that says, Jesus, be a fence all around us every day. Jesus, I want you to protect me as I travel along the way. I know I can. I know I will. Fight my battles if I stay, if I keep still. Lord, be a fence all around me every day. Yes, sir. Don't you want that fence around you? Yes, sir. I do. Because I need that fence around me. As I pray, I'm praying, Lord, protect me. Protect my family. Father God, I want that shield of protection in front of me every step I take. My, my. I am praying. I am asking, Lord, please be that shield. And finally, the letter E. Empire. Empire. That's it. For your kingdom, for your kingdom is the power and the glory forever and at and ever. God always is to be praised. He's always need to be worshipped. He's always need to be celebrated. And along he is king who rules over the empire. My brothers and sisters, these words from God where he said, here's an example on how to pray. He didn't say every time we pray we need to use these exact words, but here's an example. He wants you, wants you to know that he's in charge. He's reigning over you. He wants you to know that he's, he's going to take care of every one of your needs. Yes, sir. He wants you to confess your sins. He's going to protect you because you're part of his empire. I know I love being under the protection of God. I love to get on my knees and pray to Christ. And as I was down in Texas, I found myself constantly praying for someone, along with praying for my pastor, along with praying for you. I don't know how long your prayer list is, dear, <laughs> but I have to turn the page. <laughs> I got some more names to put on my prayers because that's what we need to do. Don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop giving. Don't ever stop asking God to give you more so you can deal with the rest because the word of God says the harvest is plenty but the laborers are few. God needs some more harvest. Yes, sir. He needs some more of us to step forward. And take the armor of the whole armor of God, mm -hmm. to fight for his name, to pray to him, to ask him to forgive us. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray today. I want you all to just take a moment and just close your eyes. We didn't pray when I started, but we're going to pray now. <laughs> and think about something in your life that you just said, Lord, I, I'm having a problem with this. Oh Lord, I am thankful for this. Amen. I want you all to just focus on something in your life that you say, Lord, help me through this. God, I need forgiveness for that. Father, I spoke some words that I shouldn't have spoken, but today I'm asking for forgiveness. Father, my brother, my sister is suffering right now, Lord. And God, you know what the needs are. Help them now. Focus praying for someone. And maybe you just need to pray for yourself. And sometimes you gotta like be like David, just lay hands on yourself. And say, Lord, here I am. Standing in the need of prayer. I need you. I need you. Father, we thank you today. Father, we honor you today. Holy Spirit, your people are calling.
calling on you right then. One by one. We said, Lord, protect our children. Lord, protect our spouse. Protect our grandmother. Protect those that love us so that we can continue to love them. But God, most of all, Father, allow your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, to dwell in each and every one of our hearts. Because, God, we need your Spirit today. Because we're surrounded by the enemy. Please, Lord, don't take your hedge of protection from around us. Protect us. Keep us. God, we lift it all up to you. We thank you. In the name that's above all names. In the name of Christ. Amen. 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 football game. They leave church. You tell them, sing another verse of that. It's not waiting on you. I was young and ignorant. I didn't realize that without Christ, you got hell to deal with. Amen. Maybe the pastor was waiting on folks who has understood how ugly life is, how terrible it is without Christ. And I used to be a little ashamed. He'd make people raise their hands, all of that. I'm, I, I'm changed. I wouldn't want you to leave here today. But I'm knowing for sure that you you ask Christ in, him and I, that you confess with your mouth, Romans 10, and believe in your heart. What you gonna confess? Reverend just said it. Agree with God on the sins in your life, on the iniquities, gross sin. Well, you know it better than anybody else. If you're not forgiven today, if you don't feel forgiven today, listen carefully. If you don't feel forgiven today, you you can get that. The same idea is you can get that from God. But let me tell you something: you can't get it just because you're good looking. It ain't got nothing to do with it. I know you're successful, but you can't pay for forgiveness of sin. If you're here today and you're gonna fool some folk, but I'm all in your Kool-Aid, I need you to come down here and pray for you. If you're already saved, that's all church language. If you already know your sins are forgiven, then you can sit down right now. If you're already saved, you can sit down right now. If you're not saved, I want you to come down here. That's good.
So if I sat down and I asked about salvation, I don't want to get any kind of theological wrangling today, but listen to me. There's some work that God does on you with His Holy Spirit. And we could, you know, have a Bible study about does it happen at salvation, subsequent to salvation, prior to, but all I do know is if God has it for you, you ought to want it. Amen. You ought to want a feeling of the Holy Ghost. I say, you ought to want it. When somebody is a good cook, you go over their house, you don't have to worry about what they cook in. Amen. You know it's good. Yeah. Don't be asking what you serve. You know it's good. Amen. Amen. 
When you try to rationalize and calculate, you'll never be what God asked you to do. So Abraham said, go. He didn't tell him where he was going. He said, go. So I'm going to ask you to try. Notice the text. Prove me here with us. Trust me. Try me. See when I open the windows of heaven. Boy, you have a blessing. Let's do it. I want to thank, um, I remember at the church they used to ask the tithers to stand and come to give first. All that might be a little manipulative. I don't want to be that guy. But I do want you to know that where your treasure is, your heart is also. Amen. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. If you look at your checkbook, when I was in college, John McCovey, all my checkbook said was Domino's Pizza. Amen. That's all I <laughs> care about. Let's pray, Lord. Thank you. Bless us as we give in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's just leave time for it. I pulled out some money because it's clergy appreciation and Gene is going to say something about it in a minute. But I don't ask y'all to do what I want to do. So it's giving time. And you might want to give. I, I, I believe you should. It's not just the pastor, but it's Ashley, it's Lura, Reverend Davis. Yeah, I keep leading it too. Let's give a thank you.
do it, and I need to get that together. But thank you. Let me know. You got something going on? Call you, Pastor. Amen. I said, call you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Say it again. Call you, Pastor. Amen. 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 I don't have to hear it on the streets. Call me. I ain't afraid to talk to you. Call me. I love you. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, this time what we're going to do, I think what we should do now is to continue with the holy part of the service with communion. And then what we'll do is we'll have Jean to come. She's the sweetest cotton candy. And uh, with some syrup on it too, but she's real nice. Sweet. But um, let's prepare for the table. All right. I'm going to say this to you. I'm so happy that we could be a family. Amen. Amen. Huh? When you're gone for a while, you can come back and feel right at home. That's right. Amen. Amen. Don't ask for where you've been. Say, we're glad to see you. It's nice. I think I'm getting to be like Reverend Davis. I don't want to cry a whole lot. But I don't say this. Thank you, Reverend. <laughs> I'm going to do that after I can put some tears. Put me on one of your next shows, yeah. Listen carefully. You should affirm your blessings before it's too late. I feel like I'm getting ready to die, but I deal with death every single week. And one of the more painful parts of that for folk is that when something is left undone, Amen. like saying thank you, Amen. I don't stand flat footed and say, I was with some fancy Negroes this weekend. <laughs> And you know, when you're with real successful folks, sometimes you start comparing what you got and what they have. I want to tell you all, I love the feeling I have when I come in here with y'all. Because we're free in here, amen. And I could dance around here. I'd be tired when I finish with y'all. <laughs> but some churches wouldn't allow that. They'd ask me to leave. I love y'all. And I love the fact that we get to grow on this journey together. So grateful. And so on the clergy uh, appreciation that we'll hear from Jean, um, I want to say I appreciate you all and that we can have, like, the, we can change the communion and folk not, you know, go crazy. Amen. Let's pray. How we thank you, Lord, for what we read in your word. You assembled the disciples. And you spoke to them and you said, This is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. After supper, you took the cup and you said, This is my body. Blood, the new covenant in my blood. Often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. So it seems to me, God, that you wanted us to carry on remembering you. Hari, Hari told me, hung you high, stretched you wide. Right early on the third day morning. God, our power to save, power to forgive, power to break chains that have us bound. Have mercy on us, God. Mercy suits our hands. We come in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name.
down at the cross where my Savior died. saves that, forgives that too. Amen. Amen. Colors. Amen. Let us be thankful. Don't play with it. Be thankful today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, I want you all to um, receive one of the wonderful women of our church. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And Jean Wilson is going to come. She comes with love in her heart. She comes deserving the respect that we're going to give her. And her presentation deserves our full attention. Let's clap our hands for a world of Jean Wilson. Hopefully you can hear me. Yeah. 
October, a month of love and appreciation. Sis, boom, bop, bop, bop. Looks like our 
Wonderful chair of trustees of VP Bland is coming. Give her a great big hand as she comes. to get you started on thinking about looking in your closets, looking in those uh, barrels that you have of all your jogging shorts and shirts and what have you. Uh, a few years ago, we used to collect sweatshirts and we donate them through the um, Mission Downtown. We want to start that again. So if you have t-shirts that don't have holes in them, <laughs> don't have the paint stains, but maybe it's a little tight, or you have so many, so well, I can give these four away. Launder them, please, and your sweatshirts, and bring them to the building. I'm gonna have a receptacle in Narthex to gather them in. For the month of October and most of November, we're gonna collect. Uh, my experience has been because <laughs> you wore it that you think that somebody else would not be offended. Homeless people are people. Amen. And some of them are bad times because of circumstances. So if you wouldn't want to wear something that had paint stains and holes and was illy born, as my kids used to say. <laughs> no one else wants that either. And then I'd like you to add socks, new socks. They have socks in bundles. Yeah. So if you could do t-shirts, sweatshirts, and socks for October and November, we'll all appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, launder them, please, and fold them. Thank you. Yes. Children and adults, or just Children and adults, yes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think this feels really churchy. We have some announcements that are important. Thank God for Sister BP. And now we shall hear from our brother, uh, Mr. Clifton Johnson. Give him a hand. Welcome. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I just wanted to, the church to know that uh, we are really thankful for our pastor. He is extremely busy. And this Friday, we have a program called See Your Mentor Program. It's about 60 young black men that we mentor at Knox Elementary School and Pastor with his very busy schedule came over and did our opening session and it was just wonderful. After he had gone to a funeral, he came out and did a very inspirational job to about 60 young men at that uh, Knox Elementary School. So your pastor's busy and is very, we thankful, we thankful to Pastor and thank you. did a wonderful job. Amen. So I just want to thank you, Pastor, for your extra care and community relations. Thank you. Mr. Johnson uh, had from the, uh, the love of Jesus in his heart sufficient that at the Watts Willowbrook Boys and Girls Club, he ensured that those facilities received the proper funding to turn that building into a state-of-the-art facility for young black and brown folk. And uh, Mr. Johnson has a part of his legacy. And so now we've taken our ministry uh, of mentoring from there to Dr. Owen L. Knox Elementary School. For those of you who are looking at me crazy, you might not know, but Dr. Knox was one of the wonderful men of God in this church. Just an extraordinary individual. Yes. And so it does Mr. Johnson, it does me, both of us, well when we're over there. And I want to say this about Cliff Johnson. Whenever there's something to help those kids and to see your potential mentoring program, Clifton Johnson is there. And he believes in living a life that matters most. What matters most? And so let us uh, continue to pray for the Johnson family. Y'all 
black royalty up in this house. Amen. And we love you. We all serve. Amen. And we thank God for it. All right. We've had a great day today. Uh, I may have mentioned uh, the clergy appreciation. And I'm so glad that Gene helped because it is ministry, the technology minister, Stephanie and Cheyenne. Uh, ministry of fellowship and um, ministry here in the in the, um, in, the in the choir, Sister Lurie Daniels Ball. Amen. Ministry there with the piano. When Keith Lee is here, it's just way better. Amen. Amen. Some of you wonder why he's not here all the time because he's so good that he, another church tried to steal him from us. And we were trying to steal him from them. <laughs> We didn't want to get the fighting going on, so he just splits both ways, and we honor him. So let's remember him, and certainly let's remember Reverend Davis. Amen. And you know, I got to thinking about it. Uh, we don't. This is clergy, and that's a, a broad understanding. But ministry is divine resource. Meeting human needs yes. through loving channels to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Ministry is divine resources. You don't have to be a manufacturer, you're just a distributor. Huh? Meeting human needs. It is about people. You can't do ministry if you don't love folks. Huh? Divine resources meet human through loving channels to the glory of God. When it's all said and done, what you do for Christ last and it should bring God glory. Amen. 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 So when the technology folk are up late at night trying to make sure that you can watch it on YouTube or on Facebook, that's ministry. Amen. When Lure is doing all that she does to advance the realms of God in this church, multitude of things, that's ministry. When Ashley is doing what he does, obviously it's ministry. Keith Lee is ministry. When Reverend Davis is doing what he's doing, it's obviously what? Ministry. So it's one time a year. I'm going to ask you, as your pastor, go get some cards. If you don't have any money, write some words in there. Amen. One time a year. And I made it my business when I became a pastor because I was an assistant pastor before. The pastors get all the attention. But I said, if I ever become a pastor, I'm going to make sure that the clergy associates get a blessing. Amen. And these men will tell you that I don't come short. Amen. I won't ask y'all to do what I want to do. So I'm asking you as your pastor to do something nice. Thank you. God bless you. I want to take a moment. I know I'm talking a lot today. I don't know why. I know y'all want to grow, but I want to say some more. I want, I want y'all to look in the third row and see Sister Carol all hollow. Um, there's some things that have happened in my life where Carol has helped me tremendously. And she she always comes at me trying to glorify God. This week she called me and I realized that she was trying to help me to serve the Lord. And Carol, I know you know, your past, you know, I could be a little spicy. Amen. I'm not for everybody. But Carol, I want you to know I appreciate you. I know you're trying to help me. And I appreciate you, Father. And I want us to be that kind of church where we can talk to one another. Amen. Amen. Not be somewhere with your feelings hurt. Just talk to one another. That's how you work things out. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to make some more mistakes because I'm going to. But it's nice to know that we can talk it out and get it straight. 
the soul song says, you got to get it together or leave it alone. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound very right for the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> but let's be loving, amen. Thank you. Let's stand all over the church and get our benediction. Thank you. <laughs> Bill, I'm happy to see you, man. That's a good one. Jerry Cordell, what up with you, man? Good to see you. Let's pray. God is so wonderful to smile and to have peace. And to find victory over sin. And to hear a strong word from your servant, Reverend Dilson Davis. Thank you, God, for the love today. Bless us as we go forth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. God bless you.